Is anybody here? Oh, we have a few people here, right on. Um, I have two phones going, so I actually can't see any comments uh, on one of them, but I can see comments on the Instagram one, so I'm gonna pay attention to the Instagram one, and, and, and if things start happening on Facebook soon, then I will say hello there as well, but thank you everyone for checking out what's happening. It just got hot in here. It's the first time I feel like I played for real in about two weeks. That's about 30 seconds of playing. So thanks for coming to hang out today. Um, I think we're all trying to get through this and connect in whatever way that we can, whatever ways we can. And so, um, you know, I really feel uh, grateful for the opportunity to connect with people online during this time. Certainly not my preferred choice of way of doing things. I think we were all hopeful uh, with the Spirit Rising album coming out on Morning Music this year. Uh, in a few weeks, actually, uh, we were hoping to have a lot going on. So certainly, um, certainly grateful to be making music, um, but we're pivoting in a big way and uh, going to be making music from home. And um, this is a perfect example of what that's going to look like. So um, I look forward to doing this as often as I possibly can. It's not really my favorite way of connecting people um, through music. Uh, I prefer I prefer a much more uh, personal. This is as personal as we can get at this time, but I certainly prefer something in person. Um, I'm not really somebody that goes to a show and watches the show through my phone. You know, I just I need to be there. I need to feel the energy. So I'm going to do my very, very best to to you know throw some energy out here, some positivity and some love. And um, let's get chatting. You know, I, I was thinking about um, you know so many times I've, I've felt extremely grateful to see people cover the song Morning Star. And, um, you know, they'll tag me on it or whatever. And it just, it means the world. I've seen, it means the world to me that, that somebody from New Zealand or somebody from, you know, just some place I've never been is, is hip, to the, hip to this song and, and digs it and likes it enough to play it, learn to play it and send it to me. And um, the same thing with the response online for Morningstar is something that I'm deeply grateful for. We're almost at 10 million streams on it. And uh, it's just, it's one of those songs that, you know, I never... Never really thought too much about it, other than it was a lot of fun to write it. Uh, I wrote it with a dear friend, one of my close friends of my whole lifetime, Cassius Pereira, and I wrote that on my parents outside my parents' bedroom. Uh, they had a, a small balcony out there, and one day we were sitting outside, and uh, I was playing some riffs for Cassius, and he said, "Hey, I like that one." And it was it was this thing. I had this this kind of this. <laughs> Like, he's like, hey, that, that's a cool riff. Maybe we should build a song out of that. And so we kind of looked at each other and said, well, where do we go from here? And I'll never forget Cassius because we, we were such big Albert Collins fans. Uh, at the time, listened to a lot of Albert Collins, a lot of Ian Moore, a lot of, obviously, Stevie Ray and Hendrix and Clapton and all, all the heroes that we have today. And he said, man, let's, let's maybe go, what would Albert Collins do? And so, you know, we just kind of looked at each other and sat there, had a guitar, and just kind of started grooving on this thing. Like, <laughs> So that kind of became the, the rhythm and the verses, and to me, one of the most important, important parts of the song is to really make sure that your picking hand, whether you play, whether you fret with your left hand or your right hand, whatever your picking hand is, that you really think about the rhythm of the song with it. It's every bit as important as, as what you're fretting, I think, over on this side, at least that's the way I approach it, uh, what you're fretting with your uh, fretting hand. So it's really about trying to find the pocket with your, with your picking hand and really kind of setting where that groove is. And especially if you're playing it with a really strong drummer, um, it's something to make sure that that groove is, is locked and tight, especially on this kind of riff. Um, one of the great things about this song, I recorded it twice, which was really cool. The first time, um, we had a great drummer named Al Cross from Toronto playing on it, one of my all-time favorite drummers, and, um, which was a real treat. And then those recordings disappeared for a, for a period of time. Um, thought never to be heard of, heard from again. 
And so I had recorded Morningstar for uh, a record called Peace Machine with Kenny Arnoff, who is without a doubt one of the greatest drummers of all time. So it's like a real, a real pleasure to record this song with both of these beautiful drummers and um, slightly different approach to both of them, but, um, but it's all about the pocket, all about getting into groove. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, you know, I'm going I'm to talk just a little bit about, I'll break it down for a second, how I approach this. Um, we'll just do it like do a couple sections, but sometimes I get a little pickup note. So you're going to want to think of what the what the count is as you're coming in, and I usually get a pickup and one, so I get that kind of that little pickup that's so important to me. Anyway, that's how I set it up. I give myself like a little a little breath just as I'm coming in. So that's the the four and you know maybe the and coming in. So you hear it there again too, right? So I try to get a lot of pickup things and try to play with the time a little bit within it, but ultimately kind of keep it digestible for people. I'm not a big fan of hide the one. I mean, it's cool when people play that game, but it's not my favorite game. Um, particularly when you're making music, unless you're purposely trying to fuck people up. But um, in this case, we're going to keep it right, right up the middle. So um, one of the things that I do like to also approach this song, I got my thumb wrapped around most times, that sort of Hendrix or Stevie kind of approach, Stevie Ray. But I'm not playing full chords, um, at least usually. <laughs> so we get this top part again. Then this next part, I'm just hitting, usually I'm just hitting an octave, and uh, I'm not really thinking too much about hitting like a big, like a full chord or anything. It's kind of more of an octave, and it's kind of open to interpretation. What happens in the moment that time when I play it? Because I don't want to make it the same every time. I mean, it's not it's not paint by numbers, right? We're not trying to make this song, or as far as I'm concerned, for me any song the same twice. Um, if it's the same song, but I'm not going to play it the same way twice, and that's the way I've always approached this song. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, this is not a full chord when you get to this G sharp. Back. It's kind of an octave, and then an E chord. Whatever part of it you want to pick out. You could play a full open E, or you could just pick certain notes of the chord, which sometimes sounds pretty cool. You know, like, Again, your D chord could be real basic, just like that, or you could whatever you have time to fit in there, as long as you don't lose the time. So you go to D, and again, back to those kind of octave type guys. They're they're octaves. They're not exactly precise, and that's you know kind of on purpose. Wanted to give kind of a little hair and a little bit of sound around it, but that's really the the gist of it. It's a really you know super inspired by Stevie Ray Vaughan, some chord changes in songs like Tightrope or a song just. Um, the way that he would approach things um, in his playing, or Eric Clapton, again, approaching from, from that type of um, inspiration. Um, same with Albert Collins, as we talked about, and Ian Moore a little bit, and um, a lot of different players that, that went into this. And then, of course, as we get to the end of the song, there's, there's a little bit of fun that we have with the time. I know I said I don't like the game, hide the one. But that's not exactly what this is. We kind of go, on the way out, we go through this, this line that kind of goes like this. And we change it, go. So, you know, we kind of we kind of mess with that a little bit, the time at the end, fluctuate, and then ultimately go into a big nod of the hat to the king, Jimmy, and have a little bit of a, a quote from Manic Depression um, without playing the, playing the riff note for note, if you know what I mean. So, um, that's really kind of the gist of the song. The lyrics are really about... You know, just being free and trusting what's in your heart and your gut. You know yourself, no matter what anybody else tells you who you should be or who they think you should be or what you should do, what you should like, or all of that. You already know all of these things. You're, they're imprinted on your soul. So just go and do what you do. And do it with love and spread love. And that's what this song is all about. Um, so let's see. I, there's a few comments starting to come in. Uh, Diane, how you doing? It says, I can't wait to see you uh, tour Ontario again. You know what? Me too. It's probably going to be a while, but... Um, for now, we have this medium and this platform to use, so, so let's use it to the best of our ability and, until we can meet in person. Um, but thank you for your support. I uh, hope to see you soon. Um, let's see here. 
Some of these are flying by a little quick, so I'm losing. I'm reading them and then I'm losing them. So Justin says, "Do you drink coffee?" No, I don't drink coffee. Um, a juice, juicing is juicing is key. Coffee, not so much for me. Um, what's this? Billy says, "Hey Philip, what was the greatest lesson? What was the greatest lesson?" I mean, I think just. I mean, for me, I'm an eternal student, so every day is is about getting better, and every day is about learning and listening and, and trying to get better and improving what I was doing yesterday. So that's really, for me, the, you know, the greatest lesson is just trying to get better every, every, every day. Um, let's see. Oh, these are going by. Um, so cool you do this. Well, thanks for checking in. I hope so cool you came to, you know, came by to hang out with us. Um, let's see. Oh, some of these are going now on Facebook. Before it wasn't really happening, but now I see that it is moving. Um, Let's see. Michael says, is it Saturday? I eat potato. That's, that's where we're at. I think that's where we're at at this point. I hope that potato is cooked, my friend. I hope you feel all right. Um, so really about, you know, if there's any direct questions or anything you want to talk about with Morningstar, send them out now and we can talk about it. Um, you know, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll fluctuate whether I want to use a fuzz or whether I want to use a sort of more of an overdrive sound with it. So, you know, what I have been using is sort of an overdrive just now. If I want to do a similar thing with like a fuzz tone sound. To it, which I really, really, really like. Alright, well, that's not really part of the song, but we're fucking around, so let's have fun. Um, so let's see, what year is that Strat? Thanks, Hugo says. This is a 1963 Stratocaster, and uh, I'm super grateful to own this guitar. I actually did a video with my friend uh, Nick on the riff, so check out Nick70. He, um, he's got a great YouTube channel, he's here on Instagram as well. And he invited me on his channel a few weeks back, and we chatted about this guitar, and um, yeah, it was cool. So, so look him up, Nick70, the riff. And uh, you'll find all kinds of cool, uh, cool information on there about guitars, but specifically this one. We did chat about it, and Nick's a great guy and a great player and a friend. Um, what's this? Brando saying European tour. I know, man. I mean, I wish. We've been trying for years to come back to Europe. And uh, we won't be coming to Europe anytime soon. <laughs> I don't know if any, you know, I think we're obviously, I mean, thanks, Captain Obvious, but I think we're, we're locked down for a while. I don't know if there's going to be any t European touring later this year or not. I think... Again, I think this is where we're going to be, and who knows how long we'll be like this. If this is the new norm, then I'm going to have to get over it and start to learn to really enjoy this as a, a way to connect. Um, but, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get to see you in Europe sooner than later, and thank you for asking. Um, let's see here. So, uh, Kamal is asking, uh, what's my favorite Hendrix album? Uh, all of them? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think I would give you a different answer every day of the week. You just have to depend on what the light looks like on that particular day, how you're feeling, um, is which way the wind is blowing. You know, it's all, all fantastic. So let's say Axis Bold is love right now. Um, but if, you ch if we check in on this tomorrow, it would probably be Band of Gypsies or Electric Ladyland or, you know, we keep going on and on. Um, so uh, let's see here. Uh, McLaren. Hey, what's up, Dave? I hope you and your family are well. Oh, I just lost it. It's gone from the screen. I think it said play the, play the what? Play the chorus. Um, yeah, the Morningstar chorus is pretty simple. It's like, again, straight, straight up the middle, just straight chords. And again, thinking about a chorus, trying to get the, trying to get the chorus to pop out of the song a little bit. Um, and at that time, um, this, is what, this is what I came up with. Um, so, you know, we have the song. Let's see if we get a little wah wah here. Let's see. So, we go through these, we've gone through these parts, right? Where we go. So, our, yeah, so our pre chorus section is going to be kind of like a D chord. but that's what it is. <laughs> Chorus. Just a B to an A. To an E to a D. Back and around. 
mean, it's real, real straightforward. It's almost like campfire chords, but it's, um, but it's fun to sing over that, right? You get a big D chord. You can really, you know, you can really sing over it, and it, it, sa- it sounds large with a band, everybody hitting hard. And that was also a consideration, you know, when getting to a chorus, how do I pick chords or whatever key I'm in that are going to ring out in a certain way? And so that's also a consideration with, um, you know, when putting a song together like that, that you're likely going to play in a trio setting or sometimes a fourth member, maybe an organ um, or piano, thinking about what kind of chords are going to ring out and sound the best. And, you know, sometimes the fanciest of chords, they sound real beautiful and subtle and, and they, there's a place and a time. And sometimes there's just a place and a time to, to bring the hammer down, just, just get it done. And so um, that's really the approach for the chorus in the song. Uh, let's see if there's anything else um, about Morningstar you guys want to talk about. Um, like a lot of general questions, and I promise we will, you know, I'll be coming back on here and we'll chat about, we'll do like a separate day where we can talk about tones, or we can talk about wah-wah pedals, or different songs and things like that. But in, in the meantime, um, you know, I think we'll just just hang here and chat a little bit about Morningstar. I can also remind you a little a little bit as well. If you haven't heard, there's some new music that's coming out. I have a record called Spirit Rising that's coming out uh, worldwide through Warner Music Canada. Uh, so they'll be releasing the record on April 24th. Um, so it'll be available digitally everywhere uh, through all streaming platforms um, online, globally. And um, as well, there's four songs that are available right now uh, that have come out, four singles. I hope you've checked them out. And if you have, thank you for listening. And if you haven't, uh, go check them out, please. Turn them up loud. There's not much else to do. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so please please check them out. Uh, hi from Argentina. Hi, that's fantastic. Um, question here, who is your favorite player? So, you know, it's a super tough question to answer. I don't, I don't know if I can answer if any one player would be my, my all-time, you know, one favorite player. Um, you know, I mean, likely... Stevie Ray Vaughan, Jeff Healy, Eric Clapton, Jimi Hendrix, Albert Collins. Yes. And then there'd be a list of many, 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 many more. Those are the first ones that came to mind. Um, and um, But yeah, again, like the Hendrix albums, ask me tomorrow and I'll give you some, some different names. But those are, those are definitely uh, Desert Island players for me. Um, let's see. Spirit is the... Spirit is the best music. Awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah, maybe we can come on next time and talk about Spirit, too. You know, we can... Because that's real That's real straightforward, um, but the message is real direct. So, well, we can talk about that next time. Um, but, yeah, so that's that's really the gist of it on Morningstar. You know, I'll walk through it again real quick here, maybe with some fuzz, because I was digging how that was sounding. All right, so... I hope this is coming through okay, too. I have no idea... I'm just in my living room, I have an amplifier here, and I'm sitting at the, at the dining room table. So, I hope you're hearing this all right. We're doing the best we can. Uh, let's see. All right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I just kind of, that's one of the songs I really love to play. I love putting it in the live set. And again, I'm just so blown away that this song has resonated with people in this kind of way. And, you know, I love hearing, I love hearing your versions of the song. I love hearing you guys play it and put your own spin on it and um, put your own feel in it. And again, something to keep in mind is that this song is never played, again, I was saying this earlier, but it's never played the same way twice, right? It's not the, it's sort of not the idea. That's the riff. That's going to be more or less the same. But one of the fun things about playing this song that, that I like to try to challenge myself with in a live setting, not thinking about it too much, but feeling it, is when we, when we play that main riff, there's, there is room to improvise and there's room to do things, you know, there's room to do things a little differently. And that's um, each time. And sometimes you land them and sometimes you don't. And uh, if you don't land it, then you just try to make it sound like that was on purpose. <laughs> or you play that again a couple times. But um, the thing that I'm trying to get at here is that I think it's a lot of fun. I'll play the riff again for about the 50th time. But 
what I enjoy is trying to make it a little different each time. So the record sounded like this. <laughs> something like that anyway. So if I was trying to make it a little different because I want to challenge myself or push myself to see what might come out today, again, wanting to do it tastefully, wanting to serve the song, not make it a guitar clinic. I mean, you, know, you want, to, want it to fit within the song. So the idea would be like, let's just see, let's just try something real simple. <laughs> change play with the time a little bit or you know and that was that's some of one of the things that I really try to learn from drummers who are really musical with their skills is you know um, they can do anything at any time but it's, it's sometimes they just put a little bit in the right spot a little little mess with the time and it's just enough to catch your ear and bring you in and, and some of my favorite players um, some of my favorite players you know I have a real connection with my friend Michael Lazier who's an awesome drummer who plays with uh, Walter Trout um, a lot of times when we get out and, and play, it's just it's sort of like playing catch. We just sort of throw the ball back and forth and, and uh, just sort of have a conversation through it. So keep that in mind. If you're playing this song and you want to kind of change it up each time that riff comes around, try to, try to think of fun, fun ways to not lose the song, but to, but to sort of make a new, choose your own adventure in and through the riff. And if you sing, well, the song is also pretty straightforward, pretty easy to sing. Um, the lyrics, I tried to get as psychedelic as I could as possible, which, which is what I was really into at that time. And, um, you know, I love thesauruses. <laughs> That's a good, it's a good friend when you're writing a song. Um, but also, um, really just the free vibe of the song and the lyric. And, you know, I'm, I'm, glad, that, I'm glad that people are digging it. And I hope it's spread, spreading some good feelings, especially at this time. Um, let's see if there's anything else coming in. Um, Let's see here. Someone's saying tips to sing and play at the same time. It's a great question. Um, practice. That's really all there is to it. Start slow. Start really slow. If you can play something slow, you can speed it up and play it faster. Um, and I think that's it. Also record yourself and listen back to it and say, oh yeah, okay, that was good up to there. That part's struggling. That part's better. And then just keep going back. It's like if you were an athlete in your training and you watch the you watch the game tape after the game and say, well that was good, that's we can improve that and just just constantly work on it. Um, and uh, you know, it, if it doesn't come the first time, that's cool. I don't think it often does for a lot of people. So you just you just keep sticking with it and, and maybe by next Wednesday you got it down. You know, just be patient with yourself and, and take your time. Um, let's see what's coming in on Facebook here. Uh, Artur, hey, great seeing you too. Hey, my friends, Artur Menezes, beautiful player. Check him out. Uh, one of my favorites on the scene right now. Um, Jeffrey, <laughs> any tips for home firework safety? Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's my dear, dear friend and neighbor, Jeffrey Kowalczyk, who nearly blew his face off when, was it 4th of July? I can't remember. Anyway, we had a... <laughs> I'll say no more, but I'm glad that he's still with us and he was uninjured in the uh, melee. Kind of reminds me, it almost reminds me of the movie Silver Bullet, the 80s Stephen King movie where the, where the werewolf gets the fire, firecracker in the eyeball. Anyway, that's, that's out there. But uh, Jeffrey, good to see you, my friend, or hear from you. Um, let's see. What's, let's see what else is coming in here, but anything about Morningstar. Um, sorry, they're moving quick here on uh, Instagram, which is great. Let's see. Uh, what's your favorite song to play? Robert Baker guitar says, what's your favorite song to play live? So, first of all, I'm grateful to play live anytime I have an opportunity to play live. That's first and foremost. I love to play live. Love it. Um, and I especially love playing live when things are organized well and, you know, everybody's cool. Um, that's, that's a really great, great feeling. Um, and it's a privilege to be able to play live. Um, you know, for me, I think it's... It's a hard question to say if there was one particular song, but I think it's any time I get an opportunity to really um, say or play what I'm feeling. And um, that happens sometimes at different points during a show or, or different songs on different, different days or nights whenever you're playing. So I think just trying to be open and, um, and try to um, be ready and, and as, uh, as open as I possibly can. 
and try to enjoy as much of it. And sometimes it's not comfortable, right? Sometimes you have a moment where the guitar maybe is out of tune and you, things are loud, you can't hear your voice. And, and so sometimes things can get complicated like that. But um, I think at, at those times, it's when you got to kind of just lay back into the, into the groove and into the music and remember why you lugged in all that fucking heavy gear to begin with. <laughs> or somebody else if they did, you know. But um, yeah, I love playing on stuff that where you can just jam and no one's... No one's telling you you got to get to the chorus. <laughs> I just like playing whatever comes up in the moment. So sometimes that might be attempting to play a jam by Hendrix, um, you know, or attempting to play a jam by, you know, a classical composer or anything. Just something that's free and in the moment. Uh, one of the ones that, uh, um, one of the ones that, that I used to play, you know, attempt to play for many years growing up in Toronto, at Grossman's all the time, Blues on Bel Air, all these clubs, Cassius and I would play this, who I was talking about earlier, we would play um, Band of Gypsies tune and kind of just, you know, we still jam on it today, but we would have, um, just kind of have fun with it and see where it would go. And eventually it would turn into 20 minute versions of the song, just, just try something out and have fun. Um, but that, one of those, one of those riffs is this one. <laughs> It's a great, great riff, and I'm pl I play a little different, obviously, than the original. Um, just sort of brought my own feel into it um, because there was only one person that could play with the feel of Jimi Hendrix, that's for sure. Um, let's see here. Dan is asking, What's your favorite string gauge and brand? So, uh, thanks for asking, and you know, I love strings. I've always used Diodario strings, um, use them now, always have. They're a great company, super consistent product. Um, and great people that work there. Very thankful to collaborate with them and thankful for their support. Um, the gauge of strings is usually 11 to 54, sometimes 10 to 54, just depends on, depends on how I'm feeling, if I've been playing a lot. Uh, the majority of my playing is, is based around string bending, so I just have to really pay attention to that. Um, you know, just see how I'm feeling. Um, because at a certain point it's diminishing returns. A certain amount of hurt is okay, but when you get out of that threshold, it, it, like into another place of hurt, it can be very, very bad, and it can actually um, derail your playing. So I think you're not a hero because you're playing with 13s. I mean, it feels good to tell your mom that you can use 13s, um, but if you're playing 200 shows a year on those, you're probably not going to be playing for long. And I think... You know, Stevie Ray Vaughan was able to do it, but there was only one Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know? There was only one guy with those mitts, and uh, I'm sure there are other people that play, but with that kind of bending approach and that very, very physical, um, you know, that very physical approach to the playing, as well as very sensitive and dynamic, but um, there's only so long you're going to be able to bend those, uh, bend those 13s. So I tried, you know, for a long time, 11 felt really good. Um, and uh, yeah, it depends on the instrument as well. Sometimes if the instrument is, uh, you know, if it's a real, real fluid instrument to play, you can actually go up a, you can go up a gauge. So really it's about listening to your body and playing what, you know, what, what feels good to you in that moment. Um, yeah, not everybody can, you know, bench press whatever, you know, a thousand pounds. Um, let's see here. Somebody said uh, something about which pickup position for Morningstar. So thanks for asking. Um, let's get, yeah, let's get back to Morningstar for a second. So... Um, a lot of times I'll start with the neck pickup. Um, you know, again, if I'm using fuzz, I might roll it back to the bridge. But here's the difference between the two, right? So the I play with a fairly bright sound anyway. Not bright as in like abrasive, but clear. I want to get a clear, full body, full spectrum sound. So this is the neck pickup. This is what it would sound like with the neck pickup on. All right. neck pickup kind of sound, you know, I want to try a similar thing on the, back on the, on the bridge pickup with a fuzz, like this. That's bridge, neck, I think it's really just whatever, 
for me, whatever I'm feeling in the moment. Some days the fuzz is sounding amazing, and that's all I want to use. Other days, you know, more of an overdrive sound is amazing. So, again, choose your own adventure. Keep it fresh. It doesn't have to be... Uh, doesn't have to be paint by numbers or the same every single time. I think that's part of the whole thing that I love about music is that it's free. Like your expression is free within it, right? So it's like a blank canvas. It's like your Bob Ross canvas and uh, you can paint whatever you want. You can create your own world, as Bob Ross says. And, you know, I really feel like that's something important for me. Uh, when it becomes rigid and it has to be, oh, that's not blues or, oh, that's not jazz or that's something else or... I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't subscribe to that. That's a huge turnoff. Um, I think you play what you feel. And, you know, there's always cork sniffers that want to put it in a certain box. And that's fine. I mean, to each their own. But to talk down on something and say that it's not jazz or it's not blues is ignorant. I don't think, you, I, don't think I or anybody else knows what's going on inside of that performer when something's coming out of them. So let it come out. Let it come out, you know. Um, so that's really uh, something that's important for me about music is not to get caught up in what it is or it isn't. Are you blues or are you rock or are you jazz? What you know, like I'm all of that, all of that. Why not? You know, um, I don't have to be an expert on any one of those things. All I know is that I'm doing the best I can for me, and um, yeah, always trying to learn. As I said, just being a student of music and trying to learn and keep it as a choose your own adventure every time. I mean, like if you're gonna have a show with 15, 20 songs, you're gonna have a set list. You're gonna have a roadmap. That doesn't mean you can't go for a little joy ride off here every a couple of songs, then we're gonna go over here. Keep it exciting, keep it real. That's what art is, at least to me. Now, all my favorite players did that. Um, that's what I'm so I'm striving to do. So um, let's see here. Nick is saying, did you ever have a guitar teacher? Um, well yeah, everyone that I've ever listened to. And uh, but in terms of formal lessons, no. Um, I would say that the best guitar teacher I ever had though was Jeff Healy. Um, and it was never even so much of like talking to him about specific things because it was too advanced to try to pop it down and say, Jeff, how, what was that thing? I mean, he was improvising. It would be impossible, it would be impossible to try to rewind through the show and say that lick he played, a, you know, like, cause he didn't play that again. He played that one time. And I think that was really one of the most beautiful lessons is that he was such an incredible improviser and was channeling things and creating new creating new, I was just, yeah, I was having a chat about this, about Robin Trower with, with my friend Ken from uh, Oxfuzz the other day. And we were talking about how, you know, Trower, even in his seventies is still creating new things when he plays like weird clusters of notes and like voicings and beautiful phrases. And he's, you can tell he's out on a limb and he's stretching and that's, yeah, that's, uh, those are the guitar teachers. So the, the musical teachers are the ones that, um, that do that as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but you can learn from anybody. Even somebody who's been playing for three seconds, they might do something and you love it. Um, so Rob here, oh, I just lost Rob's question. Sorry, Rob, I was gonna come to you on that. And um, so, oh, somebody sees, so saying, why are you tuning your guitar in D lately? Um, you know, it's a kind of an intense question. Um, this guitar, it, like currently I'm tuned to E flat. I've been tuning to E flat for most of my life of playing guitar um, between A440, which is concert pitch for guitar, regular tuning, um, or the E flat. Um, and it just sort of depended on the guitar, depended on the setting, if I was playing, recording with somebody or, or the song. So the tuning would go between E flat or E. Um, a lot, uh, last couple weeks I started experimenting with playing in D um, because the sound and the resonance of that lower tuning really was where I was at in, a, in my personal life. You know, my, my dad suddenly passed away and we were all trying to get over it and, and still trying to get through it. And it's really, really, really bad, a really tough time. And my voice, there was so much grief. There was things I was holding in my throat and uh, a lot of pain, a lot of, uh, a lot of sadness. And so the detuning <clears throat> felt, the coloring of that tuning felt, um, felt appropriate. And uh, so that's why this new record, Spirit Rising, the majority of it is recorded, tuned down a full tone to D. Um, it's just kind of where I was at. And uh, so, you know, lately I've been coming back up to E flat a little bit, even standard sometimes as well. So it was really, that was more of an emotional decision and what I was wanting to hear and feel. Um, so let's see here. Uh, what's your preferred pickup height? So 
you know, again, um, the pickup height is important, really, really important. I mean, I'm holding a Stratocaster across all guitars. It's important for me. I usually listen with my, you know, listen to what I want to hear. So if I find like I'm lacking something in, in a in a pickup position, um, I'll mess with them because you can get a whole range of tones from from raising them, lowering them, you know. Uh, so really, just try to pay attention and listen to it. Um, over a period of time as well. I might like it on a Monday and on Thursday I may not like it. So I just got to spend some time, really listen um, and be patient with it. Dial it in over a period of time. So um, let's see here. I'm thinking about, I might might wind this down soon and just, you know, again, want to thank everybody that that hopped on today to, to chat a little bit about Morningstar and about a few other things as well. Um, and again, you know, I just encourage everyone to uh, spread the kindness and spread peace and, and understand this is a difficult time for each and every one of us and um, for so many different reasons. So let's be patient if we can with ourselves and be patient with each other and uh, give ourselves the room to, to get through this. And to anybody who is sick or um, really struggling or suffering, I wish you much peace and comfort and much love. And um, let's continue to lean into each other and, and get through this time um, and come out the other side even better. I know we can do that. There's so much to learn and so much to reflect on at this time. Um, so I'm definitely going to do everything that I can to uh, come out the other side and be a, be a better person. Um, 